Assalamu alaikum. You're watching Canadian Muslim News on Muslim Network TV from Toronto. I'm Mohammed Maxwell Hassan and coming up, an interview with Imran Hassan on the recognition of frontline heroes in Ontario. Here's what's making news. COVID-19 infections resurge in Ontario. Canadian Indigenous artists demand strict copyright law. Miserable conditions of St. John's Prison leads to sentencing credits. India's ruling party has no Muslim legislator in parliament. And now the details. Ontario Science Advisory Table tweeted on Wednesday the resurgence of COVID-19 infections in the province. According to the series of tweets posted by the table, there is an exponential growth of infectious BA5 subvariant leading to higher case counts and hospitalizations. The table also stated that the wastewater signal is high, indicating a strong presence of the COVID variant. In order to reduce the risk of infection, Ontario's Chief Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Kieran Moore, suggests that Ontarians revert back to face coverings, avoid gathering in crowds, and ensure maximum ventilation. Moore also recommends Ontarians to stay up to date with vaccines to avoid getting infected. There are calls to introduce strict copyright law against Indigenous art fakes in an attempt to protect the rights of local First Nation artists. British Columbia's artist Richard Hunt, whose artwork has been copied, says increasing tariffs on imports of copies can somewhat help the First Nation artists in, the, in what is a $1 billion industry. Senator Patricia Bovee, who is also the first art historian to sit in the Canadian Senate, is demanding the government to enforce stricter tracting and border measures to stop the influx of fakes swarming in the indigenous art market. According to Bovi, the fakes produced in Asia and Eastern Europe are an injustice to the generational skill. The Supreme Court judge heavily criticized the state of Newfoundland and Labrador's largest prison, granting offender Jonathan Slade 180 day credit, reducing his four year sentence. The prison is Her Majesty's Penitentiary located in St. John. The decision comes in response to the harsh conditions in the prison, including lack of hygiene and offering no privacy in toilets. The facility has also has non-existent recreational and rehabilitative programs, which has led to previous sentencing credits. The deplorable condition of the 150-year-old prison has been a subject of concern for the previous two governments as well. The Department of Justice is expected to build a new facility in the next three years. Indian ruling Hindu nationalist Bharatiya Janata Party no longer has any Muslim legislator in the parliament as the tenure of its Muslim legislator Mukhtar Abbas Naqvi, the country's minority affairs ministry, ended on Thursday. 64-year-old Naqvi, who was a member of the Rajya Sabha, or upper house of the parliament, resigned on Wednesday. Now, among its 395 members in the Indian parliament, the ruling BJB will have no Muslim legislators, despite being home to the world's third largest Muslim population. The term of the BJP's last parliamentarian in the Lok Sabha, or lower house, ended in 2014. It is for the first time in the recent past that the party has no Muslim legislator in either house of the parliament. And that's all for the news. In a token of appreciation and recognition of the sacrifices made by frontline workers in Ontario, Peel Crime Stoppers and Boots on the Ground collaborated to make the Frontline Hero Barbecue free for the community. Joining us now is the chair of Peel Crime Stoppers, Imran Hassan. Thank you so much for being with us on the show. Walaikum assalam, brother, and thank you so much for having me. So as a starting point, how did the idea of a Frontline Heroes Barbecue come about? Well, you know, uh, during the pandemic, uh, so many people were affected uh, by uh, the, the emergency. Uh, but the people that were responding to the emergency, while many of us were remaining um, safe at home, uh, were the first responders and uh, those who were working on the front lines. And uh, we thought about it uh, in 2021. Uh, what can be done to uh, honor and recognize these heroes? And we thought, 
perhaps we could have an outdoor setting which was safe for interaction. And, um, and we decided that a barbecue would be the most appropriate. Uh, we held it last year in Mississauga at the Meadowville Conservation Area. And we had an attendance of about 150 to 200 people. And we thought we should really build on that. So we moved it to a more um, uh, appropriate facility in Brampton, which was Chincuzi Park. All right. Now, to give us a little taste of this barbecue, could you give us an outline of the program? What activities took place? Well, listen, uh, if you really wanted a taste of the program, you'd have to come and try the food. But I'm happy to you know, share with you a little bit of the experience that people enjoyed when they came uh, out uh, for this celebration. Uh, the program uh, uh, was initiated by a uh, presentation of uh, the Canada flag, which uh, was delivered to us um, uh, from the Peace Tower in Ottawa. And uh, it, was, um, it was raised and we sang O Canada together uh, as a community. And the, uh, and the uh, ceremony was uh, led by um, a singer from HMCS York. Um, and uh, of course, uh, we had two RCMP officers who, uh, who helped uh, lead that uh, presentation, along with our first responders. And um, it was really a special celebration. We had a, we had a march uh, as well as, uh, you know, the singing of the national anthem, followed by um, a presentation by Senator Victor O, oh, who joined us from Ottawa uh, in uh, presenting certificates of recognition to the, uh, to the uh, first responders and frontline workers. So what was the actual response of the frontline workers when they participated in this? How did they take it all? Well, initially we thought first responders, police, fire, paramedics. Then it uh, came to our attention that uh, there's so many other, uh, you know, others on the front line, including our healthcare. So uh, we reached out to William Osler as well as Trillium uh, Healthcare. And, uh, and of course, our transit operators in uh, Mississauga and, and Brampton. Uh, and uh, they, they came out in very large numbers. We had uh, nearly 300 certificates and uh, also a commemorative coin that was struck for the occasion, which uh, had uh, the emblem of uh, Peel Crime Stoppers on one side and um, boots on the ground on the reverse side. Was there any, just curious, was there any moments or any particular workers that reached out to you afterwards, had their appreciation? Was like, how did they feel? Like, did it serve its purpose when it comes to the recognition? Well, really, I think uh, the, the response that we got from everyone was that, um, you know, many people have uh, have, have overlooked uh, some of the, you know, some of these individuals who have come in day in, day out during the pandemic and sacrificed their lives to ensure the safety of the public. And a gesture like this was so well appreciated uh, that we even had, as I said, uh, tr um, William Osler Healthcare uh, Partners Foundation President and CEO. He came out to uh, express his vote of thanks, along with the uh, Brampton uh, Fire and Emergency Services Chief uh, Bill Boys was uh, present, and of course, Peel Regional Police uh, Services uh, Chief uh, Nishan Duriapa came out and also expressed his uh, his vote of thanks. Now, being an essential worker takes up a huge emotional and physical toll. Now, with the with the spirit of the barbecue and recognition appreciation, how can the general public continuously keep their spirits up? Well, this initiative, as uh, we, we spoke of earlier, uh, was a collaboration between Peel Crime Stoppers and Boots on the Ground. Boots on the Ground provides mental health support for front lines uh, in, in, in this uh, in this instance. And, uh, you know, we can't forget about the mental uh, mental health impacts on first responders and i think it's uh, i think it's uh, upon all of us to be mindful and respectful uh when we're dealing uh with uh, with our public servants and uh and these first responders and our frontline workers just so that um, you know we can all get through this pandemic together i think we're going in the right direction i, I believe we are and uh, we're not through it entirely but uh we're, we're certainly uh, we're certainly going in the right direction any ideas, like anything, like thank you notes, anything in particular that you've found in your experience that's really done a great job that's, that anyone can, can pursue and go about to say, hey, thank you, you know, you're not invisible, your work really means a lot. Uh, I, I, I would echo what you said um, in that, um, you know, whenever you see uh, any of our first responders or our frontline workers that you acknowledge them, uh, thank them for their service, and I think the simplest way of just respecting them and making them feel appreciated and welcomed is with a big smile. A smile is worth 
quite a lot. So now just curious if anyone wants to get involved with Peel Crime Stoppers and Boots on the yes. Ground, how can they do so? Excellent. Uh, and thank you for asking, brother. Uh, please visit peelcrimestoppers.ca or bootsontheground.ca. And uh, there are options there to uh, get involved by volunteering, or you can make a donation and support either charity. We are both registered charities and both have um, volunteers who operate the programs independently. And uh, we don't have any paid staff. So all of the funds that we collect are uh, used to serve the community, serve the public through the various different programs and initiatives. So Brother Imran, what made this event unique? Excellent question, brother. Um, the program initiated by uh, a uh, land acknowledgement delivered by the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation chief, uh, Stacey Laforme. We felt it was very important to um, respect the lands and respect our First Nations community. What else made the um, event unique is that the food that was served was 100% halal. And we had three different food trucks that uh, it created an experience for our guests. And, um, and if I could just elaborate a little bit about the different food. Uh, we had one food truck that served Middle Eastern food with a uh, Mexican twist. Um, and then we had a second food truck that served Mediterranean food um, in the form of fresh pizza uh, in a wood burning oven. And, uh, and then the third cuisine that we served was uh, Caribbean food. And so together, it was representative of the uh, community that lives and works and, 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 and plays in Peel region. And we felt that that was very important, that you know, we be a reflection of the community in the cuisine that we serve at the event. Now, generally speaking, what would you say is some support that's needed for the frontline workers? Is it like funding or any other kind of pertinent issues? What would you say is needed? Absolutely. Uh, both Boots on the Ground and Peel Crime Stoppers are community-led organizations that do not receive sustainable funding from uh, the government. And so it's very important that, you know, the uh, first responders, the emergency, fire and police services all receive appropriate funding from all levels of government. And I feel that um, if they're respected in providing uh, the appropriate funds and resources to support their front lines, then it will be less of a demand on community-led organizations such as Boots on the Ground and Peel Crime Stoppers. Uh, but that being said, I, I feel it's also an opportunity for the community and the public to uh, help uh, lift up, uh, you know, the, uh, the the overall well-being and safety of uh, of our of our community through these kinds of programs, and it allows everyone to participate. Final question, brother Imran. Any words of advice or anything that you'd like to say to folks to really help gain that appreciation for the frontline workers? You know, we're in this together, and I think that's a message that uh, we've uh, resonated uh, throughout the pandemic. And we are safer and stronger as a community when we work together. So I just ask uh, that, you know, our, our, our citizens uh, in Peel region uh, keep that top of mind and know that we are building safer and stronger communities uh, through initiatives like this. And everyone has a role to play and everyone can do something uh, to help uh, lift up the community and build that resilience. And uh, I encourage uh, everyone to, you know, stay connected and, and, and get involved and uh, stay tuned to programs like this that are helping highlight and shed light on uh, the, uh, the different efforts people are making within our community. All right. Wonderful. Well, that's all for now. But thank you, Brother Imran, for sharing your insights and all the best on keeping Peel safe. Thank you. And walaikum asalaam. Get more informed by supporting Canadian Muslim news by subscribing. Stay tuned for the next episode. Assalamu alaikum.